On Thursday, 7th of March, Biotris held a one-day workshop on biomimetic design and theory of invention. TRIS certified experts Dr. Nikolai Bogatrov and Dr. Olga Bogatrova hosted the event having three delegates successfully resolve their challenges. Our participants, Jelle Baumgartel of Wageningen University, Professor Mark Good of Cardiff Metropolitan University and Dr. Evgeny Selensky of Trimble UK had a great time learning about bio-inspired systematic approach designed by Biotris. Grounded on a base of TRIS, this approach was developed by Dr. Nikolai Bogatrov and Dr. Olga Bogatrova, who have more than 50 years of joint experience in biology, permaculture and bionics. Professor Mark Good's challenge was waste food within NHS. Here is how he resolved it. The first thing, when I, when I came here today, I saw waste as waste. Okay, if we start with what a resource is, we've got right time, right dose, right place, right amount, right consumer and right mode. So I've gone on the other side and looked at why this waste might actually be occurring. So if we start off with we're wrong time, it could be that the food is being delivered too early to the patient and they don't want it. Or it could be being delivered too late, so it's actually cold and they, don't, they still don't want it. It could be in the wrong dose, so it could be too much or too little. It could be completely in the wrong place, because my understanding is food is normally ordered the day before, and it might not be the same person that orders it is the one that actually eats it. So somebody might say, well, I like egg and chips, and they would eat that if they were in the hospital the next day, but they get discharged, and the person that comes in to actually eat it hates egg and chips and wouldn't eat it. So I think there needs to be some form of mechanism to make sure that the person who orders it is the person that's going to be the customer. And I think it's a communication problem. Why isn't there some form of electronic system where they can order at the beginning, let's say, I don't know, nine o'clock or 10 o'clock in the morning when they know that person's gonna be in, rather than order it the, the day before. Then we've got the, the, the wrong amount. And I think with older people, you might give them too much and they don't want it. Um, or people might not like the actual type. Then we've got the consumers, and I think this is where a lot of this can change. One, I think there should be an opt-in and opt-out process. So people who want hospital food can say, yes, I want hospital food. But people who don't want it, I think are very likely not to eat it. But also visuals, I think, are important. So you might order egg and chips, but when it actually arrives, you don't like it because the egg scrambled and you want the egg to be normally fried. That's what you expected. But because there wasn't a picture of it, then, uh, then you didn't get what you, what, what you expected. I've got wrong mode here. You might have vegetarian food delivered to a non-vegetarian or non-vegetarian food delivered to a vegetarian. Either way, I think, think is wrong. And I recently came across some information on dementia. And people that have got dementia tend not to see white very well. So if you put a white plate in front of them, they'll not eat it. But if you put it on a coloured plate, an orange plate or a yellow plate, then, then they would eat it. The big thing that I've got from this is don't see waste as waste. See it as a possible resource, given the amount of money that is spent by the National Health on on food and how much is wasted, this could, this could save millions and millions of pounds. Evgeny Selensky brought the challenge of tuning the parameter settings so that those fit users' requirements. Here is his journey to his discovery. According to the TREES technology, we can formulate it as the problem of creating a structure uh, that is um, capable of answering users' actions uh, or, or or, or capable of answer, answering users, users' needs uh, in, a, in an environment with uncertain uh, parameters, uh, incomplete knowledge. And um, uh, sometimes the users themselves, uh, they are not fully aware of what they need. So uh, according to uh, BioTree's uh, recommendations, uh, we actually uh, uh, could, could identify a number of principles uh, that could actually give us uh, guidance through the process of uh, solution creation. And that is, I'm thinking of a questionnaire that would guide 
a, a user through a set of questions such that uh, they help themselves to find an answer. Um, uh, ideally, this kind of uh, questionnaire should be as, as short as possible. It has to cover all possible scenarios. So I'm thinking of a process whereby uh, you know, we, we have a tree of various, um, uh, various um, answers uh, and this tree can be of various, uh, various depth. So, uh, so it, it is um, a, a questionnaire of uh, uh, dynamically changing depths from customer to customer and dynamically changing widths. So um, the principles that are relevant uh, to, to this particular problem are segmentation. In terms of uh, locality, we can think of a tailored solution. Uh, dynamics and uh, parameter change. They can be interpreted as uh, the change in the number of questions as the, the particular dialogue with the user requires. Periodic action, I think uh, it means in my situation, is that we can potentially improve the, uh, the strategy of uh, asking relevant questions at different times in the process of uh, interaction with the system. Mediator is, uh, well, it's obvious. Self-service is flexible level of detail, so basically, uh, again, overlapping. So I, th I think um, it's been a uh, very helpful seminar. Jelle Baumgartel's challenge was creation of sustainable urban water infrastructure. Here is his resolution. I decided to have a look at urban water infrastructure and then specifically at wastewater infrastructure, which is uh, in its current state rather expensive and energy, uh, and, and energy consuming because the, the treatment is centralized and therefore the wastewater needs to be transported over long distances, uh, infrastructure is expensive and the treatment itself is often also quite expensive because there is a lot of energy required to uh, facilitate the biological degradation of the, the substances in the wastewater. So, um, what, what was the matter, what was the problem? Uh, there is water being used, which needs to be purified before it can be uh, well, used in the household and then it is uh, transported to the wastewater treatment plant. So it would be nice to reduce the amount of water consumed, so that it will also reduce the energy needed to treat it. However, a wastewater treatment plant requires a minimum amount of, it, of input in a day, otherwise it cannot function, otherwise it just stops. Um, so this is a contradiction. You need a high load, so to say, on the wastewater treatment plant, otherwise it doesn't work. And you also want a low load because it will save energy and water. Um, so what I, I, I tried to work with this matrix, but as I said, uh, I, had some, I ran into trouble with the problem definition, so I just tried some things. And um, I came across principle 24, intermediary, and it occurred to me that this wastewater treatment plant needs a certain amount of water, so if we make it a closed system with like a bucket of water, it has a certain amount, and we just add the stuff that we want treated in there, in a concentrated form, then we would be able to consume less water because the treatment plant has all the water it needs. So the intermediary process is you have it in a concentrated form, so you use less water yourself, and then you transfer the water in, or the, 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 stu the substances into the wastewater treatment plant. And uh, then there was the issue of energy used to provide oxygen to the bacteria. Uh, usually there are uh, pumps used to blow uh, air in, into the water and this is the, m the uh, factor that um, makes up the highest operating cost for the whole wastewater treatment plant. We need air coming to the bacteria, oxygen, and now we do it by blowing, but what, what basically also would work is to have a windmill, which is in these times mostly used to generate electricity, and to have it, to, to use it in the old-fashioned way, as it was used, for example, in the Netherlands to make, la make sea into land, so to pump water away, and uh, to have the rotational energy of the, of the windmill transferred to a rotor. This was one solution coming out of a 
very my non-professional dealing with this table, so I'm quite confident that there can be a lot of even more useful solutions out of it with some more experience and uh, more practice. So uh, I think it was a very fruitful day. All delegates received awards and electronic copies of innovation-related literature, all of which was written and composed by Beatrice's team. Everyone was happy to have participated and had a great time on this workshop which took place at the University of Bath. If you are interested in participating in our next workshop, please call us on 01225 920226 or visit our website www.biotris.com. We look forward to hear from you.